This is Van Welton from VanWelton.com speaking through Skype to Battle Creek, Michigan. Deborah Lane today in reference to Down Syndrome, something I think of great importance to people everywhere in the United States and indeed the world, and a subject that I find fascinating. Hi, Deborah. How are you? Hi, I'm fine, Van. How are you? Actually, doing very well. Now, first Good. let me just preference a couple of things here, just in case, and I know that this will come as a surprise, Deborah Ann, but just in case you didn't know, I have a very high standard for people that I admire, that I use as role models, and also that I think a lot of, and you exceed in each one of those categories. <laughs> And I'm really serious about that, and that's well, why thank you, Van. You're, you're quite welcome. Here's the thing. If you think about how many times I have asked you to record your comments on my podcast and how patient I have been concerning <laughs> your time, have I not? Concerning yes, you have. Yes, I have. Very God. patient. Oh, Very patient. The patience of <laughs> Job. And the reason, <laughs> the reason for that is that I know that there is more faith that is caught by watching someone's demonstrations than it is taught from a pulpit. I have been a student of yours for quite some time, and I have been in absolute awe of the manner in which you've handled the situation with your Down syndrome daughter, Megan, that mm -hmm. we will talk about doing this series of that I have concerning uh, Megan in the podcast, uh, how you have handled your own life, handled the challenge of your brother, and also handled the affairs of your mother. And let me just give you an example so you understand why I'm taking this position in reference to recording you. And that simply is that during a recent trip that my wife Thelma and I had to your house, in Battle Creek, I had asked you, Deborah Ann, we sat down at the table and I said, Deborah Ann, how can you handle all these things? I said, <laughs> Megan is, and you remember this, Megan is a handful. You've got your brother involved in the situation. He's in and out of the house. Uh, your brother, for the listeners, by the way, is legally blind and you help him with his business affairs. And you've got your 90-some-odd-year-old mom there. 99. 99. Oh, my God. 99-year-old mom that you are responsible for and are a caregiver for. And you have another daughter. Has she graduated from college or is she still uh, matriculating? Not yet. She's, in, uh, uh, she's matriculating at Georgia State. This is her last year. Outstanding. And what's your daughter's name there? Andrea. Andrea, I want to mention that on the podcast as well. You've got all these balls that you're juggling. And I said to you, and I really was sincere, I said, Deborah Ann, how can you do all these things? And you, sit, you looked at me and you cocked your head and you said, Van, God doesn't give you any more than what you can handle. I can handle this. I, that, that blew me away. <laughs> it did. Because that wasn't preaching from a pulpit. That was demonstration. And so I watch what you do, and I attempt to emulate that into uh, my behavior pattern here relative to the very small issues in comparison uh, to yours that I have to deal with here. So let's begin the conversation, Deborah Ann. And when I say that, I simply mean, please forget anything about the recording. The recording process is a mechanism. Just forget that. Right. Speak, okay. speak to me. You and I are talking. Absolutely, and that's all that it is. And understand, too, there are parents and grandparents and family members of children who are yet to be born with Down syndrome that will listen to your words of wisdom and incorporate it into their attitudes so they can make for a safe haven for that child with Down syndrome and also make for a child like Megan who if anything can be said about Megan she is well developed and the most profound thing that I can say and the overall thing that I can say about Megan is that she's happy she's yeah. genuinely happy and anyone absolutely anyone in her presence knows that she's happy so let's begin the conversation 
before there was your daughter Megan there was Deborah Ann and I need for you to share with me and also the listening audience what made you decide to go to Illinois State University what was your core curriculum there and what was your motivation for uh, taking that curriculum okay I um, actually was accepted at two different colleges I always knew I wanted to be a teacher back when I was about eight or nine years old and I used to have my nieces and nephews they had to play school every Sunday were there any teachers in your school church Uh, Deborah were there there any teachers in your family that were teaching in schools none Wow. none I think I started it a generation of teachers Uh, I have uh, a niece and a great niece that's in education Absolutely. But I started out knowing that I wanted to be a teacher. It was something that I knew I wanted to become. And so I had a choice of going to Western Michigan University or Illinois State University. Both schools are noted for special ed. However, I didn't know I was really going into special ed until I got to Illinois State. I accepted Illinois State, and my uh, I applied. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I knew I wanted to do something different. I just didn't want to be a plain old regular teacher, you know. I wanted to do something different. And so I uh, applied to the Department of Special Education at Illinois State that second semester of my freshman year, which says, oh, Okay, she knows what she wants to do. And I got accepted that second semester. And so I started out um, with my concentration curriculum was in education, psychology, anatomy, physiology, stats. We had to take, you know, all these all these courses. And so um, I just started concentrating on that and started going through that. But special ed was... Uh, an uprisal of um, a very popular field in the field of education. And so um, at that time, back in the late early 70s, rather, because I started in 73, and uh, it was all over the nation. They were looking for special education teachers. And so anyway, this was something that I got involved in and loved it, and it was just a kind of a natural thing for me. What was it about it, uh, Deborah Ann? that you really enjoyed it. And where did the connection come from? I mean, from what wellspring did that come from? How, how did you relate to it? Or how did you know once I you were exposed just, to it? I'm sorry. No, I think it's okay. just going to school, we were um, integrated, uh, and we had great teachers. I had great teachers. And I remember some of my girlfriends used to say, oh, you're the teacher's pet. But I think I liked the consistent, uh, the sequential, the cognition of education. I was one of those traditional students that love to come in, do their homework, do their work, and have fun at the same time. But I was one of those kind of structured person. I think I grew up that way from my uh, mother being an elder, being an older mother, and it was just the two of us at home out of the eight. And so we just kind of lived a pretty good, structured, fairly good life, and we had great teachers. Uh, at the schools that I've gone to, elementary all the way up to high school.